Book of True Life, Teachings of the Divine Master, Volume 12, Spiritual Teaching 344, Love Each Other. 1. You come to listen to the word that, like an open book, I have shown you every day. I have revealed its content to you. I have delivered righteousness and light. I have given you the essence of my word and my love to transform you. 2. Blessed are you who have risen in the bosom of my work. I have placed my spiritual gaze on you so that you may be the ones who will witness the master to humanity tomorrow. 3. Many will come from different nations to receive the word that I have delivered to you. They are the needy and the castaways to whom I will show this basket of salvation. Behold, from sinners I have come to serve myself, to redeem other sinners. Now they are the rocks from which the crystal clear water flows. They are the sheep that are in my fold. They are the tribes of my chosen people. I have taken them and consecrated them to my service. They are the Trinitarian Marian spiritualists who unite in a single prayer to worship the Father and offer Him the flowers of their hearts. I have shed in them my charity and my light so that perfection reaches their spirit. They are chosen to receive and deliver for their conduit to humanity. They are my soldiers, my workers, my disciples of this third era. I have left in your care the source of crystalline waters and the tree with its fruits. They are the ones who have had faith to cross the desert again. They are the ones who will go in imitation of Elijah to call out the great crowds. 4. Chosen people of Israel, in you the Master's order is given, so that you bear witness of me to your brothers. You are the strong Israel that will be recognized by humanity, because in you I have poured my grace and the light of the Holy Spirit. 5. Do not waste this time, Israel. It is necessary that in the future you have my teaching in abundance, so that you do not be the weak and needy. I have told you that after my departure I will not leave you, but do not trust a lot and let go unnoticed in my word that I am entrusting to you through human understanding. I want from now on for you to be preparing yourself so that when I send you to humanity you will receive my message by intuition and feel spiritually my presence. 6. Anyone who knows how to prepare will be my interpreter. When this year 1950 has passed, your eyes will contemplate many wonders because the need of humanity is great. Prepare for the fight, but with full knowledge of this divine cause, Israel, because you will have to clarify the errors of the world and remove the obsession and the confusion of the brains of the spokesmen who will continue to say that I continue to communicate through them. No. It will not be my light in the understandings, nor will they give a word of comfort and wisdom, as I am giving you. 7. You are limited and cannot penetrate the purposes and thoughts of your brothers, but the Father with his insightful gaze can contemplate everything that tomorrow is about to happen. 8. I want you to be my true disciples, that you can show the true way, that you be my emissaries to show humanity my work. With the light that you carry, dispel the darkness and show that you are children of the light. 9. Do not be intimidated by the trials that appear on your path or by those who approach you, because they will be the needy of the spirit, that naked of good works are before my divinity. You will be the humble ones, be ready to relieve pain, and preparing the hearts of your brothers without showing off the charity that I have delivered, causing words of love and light to flow from your lips. 10. I do not want to contemplate the lie in you, Israel, because one day it will have to be discovered and then the world will say, Are these the disciples of the Master? If they are false disciples, then the master was also false, who gazed among them to give them a lie. 11. You have to testify my truth with good works, with your regeneration and spirituality. I do not want humanity to tell me tomorrow, why, if your chosen received the divine word, they do not give us the charity that we have come to ask them, 
to feel comfort in our sorrows and to receive the balm that heals our illnesses. All this is up to you to do, to feed the faith in those hearts and that the world recognize you. 12. It is up to you to make the walkers feel the freshness of the tree and rest from their dizzying run. But I will speak to you spiritually. I will make you feel repentance and confess your faults before my divine spirit. Then I will make them understand that I am receiving them with open arms and that I do not reject them, even though they are great sinners. They will spiritually listen to my voice that tells them, Beloved children, I have wept much for you, and this is the right time for you to regenerate and let your spirit be free. I will make them regret all their faults, and that they be ashamed of their iniquities. 13. That is why every day I come to teach you, Israel, so that you may carry my law written in your hearts. I will speak to you through consciousness, and I will discover for you which commandment of my law you have not fulfilled, and in this way, step by step, you will become the regenerated people, full of my wisdom. 14. You yourselves will contemplate your transformation. You will see who you were yesterday and what you are today, and then the hardest hearts will receive your words. You will be his advisors and with clarity in you, you will give to their hearts and show them the true path. 15. What direction can humanity expect from blind guides? They will only receive from you that you are the children of light, because I will spill through you. 16. The time will come when the great trials loom over humanity, but you who are under my care you will be like the birds that do not work and are fed. Then mankind will be surprised that in between so much calamity and misery, you keep yourself strong and that darkness does not invade you, because you have known to obey me. 17. You are the ones entrusted to alleviate the pain of humanity, to teach the blasphemers to pray, for they have long remained without raising their spirits in prayer. 18. But for this, you will have to spiritualize each day, removing materiality from you, because I do not want you to be the exaggerated spiritualist. No, fanaticism is abominable before me, and that is what I have come to remove from you. The consciousness will tell you how you should live in harmony with everything. 19. The time in which you will hear this word is short. Therefore, it is my will that you analyze my teachings so that you understand and can be prepared. 20. Learn from the Divine Master who gives you the teaching that will remain written and with which tomorrow you will have to recreate, because the time in which you listen to me through human understanding is short. 21. My Father's mercy rests on your spirit. Strengthen it and tell it. Learn from my teaching because you are still the weak child who does not feel my strength. At every moment I also speak to you through your consciousness to make you recognize your mission. 22. In my right hand I bring the law, and in the left hand a balance. I go from among you in this form of communication, but do not fear because I will nourish you spiritually with my word and you will not feel like orphans. You will carry me in yourselves because I no longer have to communicate through human understanding, but I have prepared your spirit so that it communicate with my divine spirit and receive my commands when it is my will. 23. After my departure, your fight will begin. 24. I entrust you with my law so that you may study it and not violate it. Do merit before me, because it is the time when, with true submission in your spirit, tell me, Lord, your will be done in us. 25. With great love and patience I have come to pick you up from the mud from different ideologies, from idolatry, because you had bowed before the effigies, before the golden calf. How much misunderstanding has existed in all times, but 
I as light, as charity and love. I have always manifested myself to you so that you do not walk blindly. 26. In this time, again, I have rescued you from the various paths that your spirit has traveled and in which you have found the pain. I have granted you different reincarnations so that your spirit, upon coming to this planet, evolve. But in this time, I have surprised you in your deep lethargy. I have not found a prepared heart to remind you of the prophecies of the second era, but it was my will to communicate through human understanding to teach yourselves anew so that you love one another. 27. My love and my light have descended towards your spirit like dew of grace, so that tomorrow you will show the world my law. If you know how to prepare, there will be no hand to point at you and cause you pain. 28. You will rise in imitation of the apostles of the second era. They knew how to prepare and wait for the propitious moment to get up to spread my doctrine. From the different sects and religions, I am going to select those who belong. They will recognize me and they will know how to fulfill their mission. 29. You will rise to deliver my teaching to humanity because my gaze contemplates their pain, their desolation, so that to her come the peace of my heavenly kingdom. 30. This is what I have offered you, my beloved people, and you will see my promise fulfilled. Your spirit will climb step by step to the top of the mountain. 31. Do not fear the murmur of humanity or its judgments. Fear my justice. Remember that I have told you that as a judge I am inexorable. For this reason, always seek me as Father, as God, so that you do not need anything on your path. 32. I come to bind evil in sheaves to be thrown into the fire. Why? Every bad seed will be reaped by my divine sickle, which is this word that reaches you to give you a life of grace. 33. As a master, I am always waiting to teach you, to lead you on the path. Blessed are those who come to listen to my word, because you will get up later to go and give your brothers the good news. He who has understood me and is putting my teachings into practice is working happiness for his spirit. 34. Some of you say to me, How have we not felt you, Lord? And I say to you, Have you not felt me when you execute a good work? When you have given charity to your brothers, don't you feel the satisfaction of going and fulfilling? Well, in that satisfaction that you carry is how you feel about me, because he who does wrong departs from me, and it is difficult to feel my presence. I am in all good works, in the charity that you do, not only sharing your bread, but giving words of love and consolation to strengthen the spirits, to comfort the hearts in the sufferings of this life. How many are in need of a little love? How many abandoned women have needed words of encouragement? And you, my chosen ones, must rise up to give love, encouragement, and strength to all in need. 35. The world is lost in its perversity, in chaos, in its vertiginous race towards evil. And to you I have entrusted this basket to save the castaways, those who have not listened to my word, but their spirits feel the need to receive it. That is why I want you to go and wake them up and give testimony of my presence at this time before humanity. 36. Testify that I have communicated at this time through human understanding and to unbelievers say that if in the second era I became a man to live with humanity, how could I not communicate now by conduit of sinners whom I have prepared with my grace? 37. Why do you give more credit to the works of men and doubt the wonders and the greatness of your God? 38. Remind them of my steps on earth as the Messiah. Remind them that I was from an early childhood to speak to doctors of the law. I taught you to pray and to be humble. I was born in a manger and died on a cross. And if I gave you that teaching, why, in this third era, 
when the world is in the third height of perversity, should you not feel my word? And why should I not show you the way that I taught you in the second era? 39. Humanity carries hatred and ill will and seeks the superfluous and also the fanaticism has been in his heart. 40. People, you ask me, why, since you have prepared us with your grace, have the trials multiplied on our way? And I answer you, in the second era I taught you to suffer and to be humble. Remember they took me to the scaffold? They put on my temples a crown of thorns, and in my hand a reed to mock me, and I was meek and humble. I knew that my blood was to be shed as a symbol of humanity's salvation. When did you know how to reject that bitterness? those troubles, that sadness. Never. I have suffered for the love of all of you and poured out my blood to show you the way of redemption. But you, in this time, are not going to spill your blood. You are only going to prepare yourselves with goodwill to speak to the world of my truth. 41. I have given you a sword and I have appointed you my soldiers. You are part of my armies to which with my word I encourage you and tell you, fight and do not fear the world, because I am your father and I will defend you. I will enlighten you so that you are not victims of humanity. 42. Beloved people, you come in haste to recognize that my word will give you salvation. As a loving father you have had me, so that you will not bear bitterness or stumble. 43. Full of patience I continue to lead you so that tomorrow you will be the example of your brothers. 44. Separate yourselves from the world so that your spirit receives my charity and does not deprive itself of my peace and my love, so that you do not find the thorns that the world has prepared with its wickedness. I have come to raise you from the abyss and to guide you so that step by step your spirit draws closer to me. 45. My light has never departed from men. I am always close to their heart, because how could I leave my children in the middle of the road? And at this time, when hearing the woe of pain, was I going to leave them without my charity? I come to put away your pain, and I have made you rest under the tree of life, and with its fruits I have fed you. You will not carry hunger or thirst after my departure and you will share the fruit, the water, and the bread with the thirsty and hungry, with the needy. 46. Behold the peoples in their desolation surprised by the great gales. That is why I come to prepare you, to enlighten yourself so that you rise up in the likeness of your master, and through your channel be freed by me from their spiritual oppression. Because I will make you know the truth, enlighten your spirit, and understanding, and I will free you from the confusions that have arisen in the world. 47. Prepare yourselves, my children, so that with my power and light you give guidance to the peoples of the earth and make them feel my peace. 48. Blessed innocence is contaminated with the evil of the world. Youth travels in a dizzying race, and maidens have also stripped themselves of their modesty of chastity, of honesty. All these virtues have departed from their hearts. They have fed worldly passions and yearn only for the pleasures that lead them to the abyss. I come to speak to you with all clarity so that you get up and take a firm step in the evolution of your spirit. 49. I want you to rise up and be in communion with your God so that you manifest the charity that my work contains. 50. Beloved people, climbing, you find yourself step after step to reach the top of the mountain. The light of the sixth candlestick is illuminating the universe, and I find myself leading the spirits, giving them elevation so they come to me. 51. I have entrusted you with a time to receive my teachings again, so that the light of my Holy Spirit may separate the darkness of your spirit. Through the understanding of the sinner, I have given you my wisdom with simple words, but carrying the truth in its essence. 52. Tomorrow you will get up, 
to go through the different roads of the earth to give the good news and to bear witness of the master so that humanity may put aside the superfluous sin and discord so that all recognize themselves as children of a single father because for the spirit there are no classes races or lineages from a single father you have all sprouted and to me you must return 53 humanity due to its disobedience is enduring its great purification and has not understood that it has prepared this chalice of bitterness but I as a father have come at this time to weigh the cross that he carries 54 the peoples in all times have despised each other forming boundaries and different ideologies and have distanced themselves from each other 55 I have manifested myself among you so that you will imitate me, so that in the desert the burning rays of the sun will not subdue you. I have prepared you with my wisdom, directing you towards humanity. 56. In the second era I prepared my twelve apostles to teach humanity, but in this third era I have come to gather the 144,000 to prepare them so that through this people humanity may once again receive my charity 57 behold israel how mankind has stalled because of its disobedience because of the weaknesses of matter that have weakened the spirit and have not allowed it to become spiritualized as is my will 58 study and analyze my teaching so that tomorrow you can deliver it to your brothers I have not come in this time to confuse humanity with my doctrine. I have only come to free you from your sins so that you can lead by the true path and reach my peace. I strengthen you, beloved people, so that you enter the fight. 59. The moment is soon when you will stop hearing this word through the spokesman, but I will not leave my children. You will feel the absence of this manifestation, but just as I have been with you spiritually from the beginning, so I'll be there until the end, because this is my will. 60. Beloved disciples, I want you to witness with your works what I have entrusted to you in this third age. From the second time I told you, love each other. When men come to listen to you, you will show them the way. You will make them recognize how wrong they were, and you will explain each one of the teachings that I have given you. You will tell them why you are spiritualists, why you are Israelites, and why you are Trinitarian Marians. Remember that I have told you that you are Israelites, not by the flesh, but by the Spirit, because you are the descendants of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, whom I named Israel because, in the test, demonstrated her strength. Therefore you, as Israelites, must be strong. You are the spiritualists, because I have taught you to seek me and love me with your spirit. 61. Why do you seek and love Mary? Because in the second era I entrusted to you her tenderness as a mother, and her spirit intercede for you and for all humanity. 62. The tribe of Levi was chosen from the first era to be the servants, the priests of God, and in this third time, again, the tribe of Levi is consecrated to the service of my divinity. They are those who are consecrated to the fulfillment of its mission. 63. People, do not imitate Judas or deny me like Peter, nor doubt like Thomas, but if you had such weaknesses, how much you will give pain to my spirit. Watch and pray, imitate my apostles in their obedience, and like them, no one wants to be greater than the other, because for me, you are all equal, and according to your works, so will the escalation of your spirit. I tell you how I said to my disciples, in the Father's house there are many mansions, but you have to make yourself worthy to dwell in them. Some of you will arrive first, and the others later. Let your spirit escalate with good works, with the fulfillment of my law. 64. When you get to the hereafter, I will present you the book, with your good and bad deeds, 
and your spirit will rejoice if the balance of my justice leans on the side of your merits. But if it does not, you will return to this planet to reincarnate and restore once more. Those who have fulfilled from the spiritual valley, you will continue doing merits to climb more and more, and you will fight and work for humanity as angels do in my spiritual world that have passed through the crucible greatly. 65. Thus, little by little, you will carve out true happiness, and in the end you will merge with my divine spirit, because you well know that you have sprouted from my bosom, and you have to return clean and pure to me. 66. If you understood how much your spirit is purified through pain, you would love pain, but the flesh allows the spirit to weaken. But I have spoken to you about prayer so that you can defend yourself from temptation. 67. After this word is no longer heard by your ears, you will rise to deliver to humanity everything that you have stored, and you will recognize the greatness of my doctrine, and you will know how to rise and communicate from spirit to spirit with my divinity. My peace be with you.